welcome to Four Seasons Campers. My name's Ellie and I'm gonna be showing you around one of our fabulous VW California Oceans today. Here we have our control panel. This operates the roof, the fridge and the heating, as well as showing you how much charge you have in your leisure battery, as well as how much waste and water you have in your tank. First of all, we're gonna look at the roof. It's important before you do your roof that you have a door open as the roof does act like a vacuum, so you need somewhere for the air to go. You also need to put your key in the ignition and turn it all the way on before turning on the engine. So the engine will be off, but the key will be fully turned on. So we undo the roof hatch here by pulling it all the way open. We then come to our control panel. We turn it on. Pop up roof. We click. We turn to open and we then hold down and you'll see the roof gradually starts to open up. The heating and the fridge are just as easily operated by simply returning to your menu by pressing on the dial on the right and scrolling up or down. The fridge runs off the leisure battery and you can see your leisure battery percentage right here. The leisure battery operates all electrical appliances in the van. It is charged whilst you're driving, but we do also recommend that for the health of the battery, you plug it into an electrical hookup at a campsite of a minimum every three to four nights. So here at the control panel, you can also turn your heating on and off as well as adjusting the temperature. The heating is run off diesel, but it's a very small amount of diesel. So please make sure you have your heating on, especially overnight so you keep yourself warm. We have our one air vent here and another one round by the driver's door. Please make sure you keep those areas clear so you don't block any air circulation. So let's take a look at the kitchen and dining area. Here we have some lights that can be operated by switching on these switches right here and as well as these lights up, up here. We do also have a 12 volt plug, which can be operated when you are connected to an electrical hookup. Here we have our sink, two gas hobs, and open top fridge. The sink has 30 litres of fresh water. We don't recommend you drink this water. We say you just use it for your teeth, dishes and boiling. We have 30 litre grey waste tank as well, but please make sure you're only putting cooking liquids down there, not coffee granules or anything that might be able to cause a blockage. Underneath here, you have your kitchen storage. Cutlery drawer right here. Your utensils. And then most importantly, your wine glasses and cafetiere. Other side, you have your pots and pans, very liquid anti back plates. To operate the table, simply push this lever and bring it out slowly. You then lift it up, and the leg will come down here. There is also a red button which will lower. When putting the table back in, ensure you slide it gently using both hands and clip it into place so that it doesn't rattle while you're driving. You also have another table hidden in this door here. So if you use this handle, pop it out and you can lift the table out and take it outside. In order to work your gas hob, there are three simple steps. The first is to make sure the gas is on at the rear of the vehicle, which we'll show you how to do in a moment. The second is using this red dial here. In order for the gas to be on, the dial should be running in line with the pipes. As you can see in this position, it is off. You then come up here and you have two dials. You want to push and turn and then ignite. The gas lever should not be confused with the waste lever, which is located at the bottom of the cupboard. The ocean has 30 litres of fresh water and 30 litres of waste and the grey waste is emptied by simply lowering the lever. Next to the kitchen area, we've got some handy storage with this hanging wardrobe and vanity unit with lights. We've also got a good overhead locker for more clothes. Under the rear seating, we have more storage where you will find the awning winder and pegs, as well as a couple of basins for washing and emptying of waste, as well as a floor towel and trowel for toileting if you're wild camping. 
please bring it back clean. You've also got your dustpan and brush in here, as well as an antibacterial spray in this cupboard. We do ask that you do bring your camper van back clean. Uh, we don't expect you to clean the outside. In order to operate this upper bed, you simply pull it back down. And to get in, you climb on this part of the seat and this part. Please ensure you don't stand on the armrests as they are more fragile. You've got your light switches here on either side and then your fly net here. Please make sure you close this as they are not midge proof. To operate the lower bed, the first thing you want to do is pop your headrest down. So you press the button and fold it down and the same on this side. We then want to get this lever and ensure it is fully up and pull the bed all the way out as far as it can go. We then grab this section, pull it up and flatten the bed. So it clicks into place. So your blinds are located around the camper van. Please be very, very careful with these as they can tear easily, particularly in the bed. If you lean on them, they can rip. You've got located on this side, the rear window along the driver's side doors. And then at the front of the vehicle in this cabin here, we use covers. To get your bed back into seating, you just have to reverse what you've done. So you kneel on this bit here and pull the handle and it will pop back up. Get your lever, press it to full and it can be a bit of a shuffle this back into place. Please make sure when driving that you do have this roof back down. To bring the roof back down, you want to pull this bed back. Now before closing your roof, you need to make sure there's absolutely nothing up here. Even if you have something as simple as a sheet, it can damage the roof and it's very, very expensive to fix um, up to or over a thousand pounds from simply having a sheet on this bed when closing it. So to continue closing your roof, you want to come back to your control panel. Again, ensuring your key is in the ignition and gone as far as it can before turning the engine on. Click this button here pop up roof. You want to turn it to close. Again make sure your door is open so the vacuum works. And hold down. This is just a reminder. Is your roof clear? Are the fly nets closed? Is your door open and your key in the ignition? So now comes the boot. First of all, we have our camping chairs, which are in here. So you just unzip. <laughs> and here's that, you pull them out. Then comes this cupboard in here. So we open this. Again, use two hands with this and be careful with it as they are quite fragile. We've got our electrical hook up here and our barbecue. In this section here, we have our gas. Here is the gas cylinder. Gas does come with your camper van. However, if it runs out whilst you're away, you will need to replace it, but do keep your receipts and we will refund you on your return. To turn the gas on and off, unscrew the lid here and then return the top dial anti-clockwise for on and clockwise for off. So lefty loosey for on, righty tighty for off. To replace your gas canister, you will need to turn the gas off and then release the valve from the bottle by turning the gold valve on the side until the valve and hose separate away from the bottle. Lift the bottle out and swap it with a new full bottle and then lower back into the gas cupboard and attach the valve by placing it over the top of the bottle. And then turning the valve on the side to screw the valve and hose back on. There is a foam wedge on the side to stop the gas bottle rattling whilst you're driving. 
Next to the gas cupboard, we have another red lever, which allows us to empty the fresh water tanks in the winter. If you move this, you'll find your fresh water draining away. So here in this cupboard, we also have our electrical power point. Green means off, which means there is no electrical power. It is really important that you have this as off before you plug it into an electric hookup point. We then get our orange wire, lift up the blue lid and slide on to the plug. At this point, we can then, once it's plugged to the campsite, come round and switch our electrical power to red, which is on. To remove the power, simply switch them off before unplugging your wire. Here we have our fresh water tank, which is next to the electrical hookup. In order to fill up your fresh water, there's a hose located in the wardrobe and you simply fill it up till full. When it's full, you'll see because the water will start coming out. There is also a level that you can find on the control panel, but it's easier just to do it by eye. When emptying your waste, you can either drive the van over a drain or use two basins and pop them under here to collect your waste of water. Your fresh water at the rear is not to be confused with your diesel, which is beside the passenger door. All of our vans go out with a full tank of diesel and we do ask that you return it to us with a full tank of diesel. There is a petrol station one mile from our base and you'll find instructions of how to get there in the manual or the sat nav. The AdBlue deals with the emissions of the vehicle. We will always ensure that it is filled up before you go away so you don't have to worry about that. As well as our Discover Media sat nav, which is on the dashboard, we have a number of maps available for your tour as well as your first aid kit, your fire extinguisher and fire blanket. In case of an emergency, our telephone number as well as our breakdown cover is on the front page of our manual. Our manual also contains everything else I've said in this video along with pictures and diagrams. In this compartment here, we have our bulbs and a torch as well as a wheel nut. And if you come to here, we have a USB point in here and in there. So to turn this passenger seat around the other way, so we use the table, what we first have to do is pull it right forward. You also want to ensure that your chair is upright so that it doesn't rub on the sides here as that can mark them. We have a lever underneath that we want to push away from you and you twist. The California has an automatic gear stick. Below the gear stick there are two more compartments. The first one is just a cup holder and the second is a refrigerated bottle holder for while you're driving. For use of the wing mirrors, we do advise that at night you have them pulled in as well if you're on any narrow roads, particularly at the top of Loch Lomond, the roads can be very, very narrow, so we advise you pull them in. To do this, you simply twist this here and they'll go up. To get them back down again, you simply move it back. When locking your vehicle at night for when you're sleeping, we do advise that you don't use the key fob as that means if you needed to get out in an emergency, the doors would be locked. Instead, what we say that you should do is, first of all, make sure all the doors are closed, bar one. So leaving this door open, we come around here and there's a little button that you'll see which has an alarm button. You want to press that, which switches the alarm off. You then get in, shut this door and press the lock button here. The reason we use this button instead of simply pushing down these switches here is because this is the only way that your back door will also be locked. And finally, the awning, which comes as a standard in all of our California oceans. To wind out your awning, use the awning winder that is located in the drawer under the rear passenger seat. First of all, make sure all of your doors are closed. You then place the pole in the hole and wind the awning out. Be careful to hold the pole vertical to the camper van and keep your hand around the pole to avoid scratching the camper van. You wind it out until the roof beams are extended but still pointing in so that you don't overextend the roof. Then unhook the legs by pushing the feet away from the centre and lowering the leg down. Unlock the centre to extend the foot down to the ground and then lock back up. You can use pegs to secure your awning. To stow the awning away, simply compress the legs 
and place back up in the awning housing by turning the foot so it's aligned to the leg and clipping in the place just away from the awning. Then simply wind the awning back in again. This is a great versatile space for storing camping boots and dog bowls, but we recommend that you don't leave up in windy weather.